Mark Walling is undergoing his first cardiac stress test. Three minutes, just hold real steady. He was scheduled for a hip replacement. However, physicians saw something suspect on his pre-surgery EKG, which prompted taking a closer look at his heart. Pressure in your head, almost like a headache. Yeah. Pressure in your stomach. These types of tests are also performed after patients undergo coronary artery bypass surgery and percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, a procedure that uses balloons or stents to help open the blocked arteries. A good majority of the patients who are tested do have some symptoms of chest pain or shortness of breath that uh, prompts this testing. The number of these stress tests has increased over the last decade. In patients without symptoms, about 10 percent still go on to have uh, stress tests, which based on the current guidelines on the use of these tests would suggest that those are discretionary or surveillance testing, uh, which isn't routinely recommended. Dr. Bimal Shah from Duke University Medical Center and co-authors studied patient claims from a national insurance carrier. The patients underwent coronary artery bypass surgery or stenting procedures between November 2004 and June of 2007. Researchers assessed whether physician financial reimbursement was related to the variation in the use of these types of tests seen across the country. Physicians who bill basically for both the um, equipment fee and the um, interpretation fee for these tests were about 50 to 100 percent more likely to order tests than physicians who only interpreted these studies or physicians who didn't uh, perform testing at all. This study appears in this week's JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association. The way that financial reimbursement is uh, structured for some of these tests may induce um, uh, increased use and in, and, and in some cases overuse. Researchers suggest re-examining the current financial structures for payment of these tests. We need to make sure that physicians are, are using the guidelines to help guide them through clinical scenarios for appropriate use of these tests. Catherine Dolph, The JAMA Report.